Hey, Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you everything that's new in Studio version 1.3. One of the biggest things that we've heard from you is that our login needs to be improved. Having to log in and not being able to paste your password, definitely a pain. In version 1.3, we're introducing browser-based logins. So you can log in via our website and it'll send you right back to Studio. So you can use your password managers, you can cut and paste passwords, much, much easier to get into Studio now. The other thing that's new is down here in the lower left, we have some overflow menus. We have the ability to jump right into support, get your connectors, C40 plugins, resources training, all right here in this little overflow menu. We've also got some new icons down here, or new places for these icons. We have settings and then your account settings as well. But let's just get into what we really are here to talk about, which is Smart Send, a new feature that we're really happy about that's gonna save you tons of time. Typically in studio, when you're sending a material or a model, you're gonna come in and you're gonna download your material model and then you're gonna send it to your program. As of today, we are introducing Smart Send, which is just gonna make sending different kinds of assets better and smarter into Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D at first, but we're going to open it up to more DCCs very, very soon. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about what that means. I've got a very simple scene set up here with this bottle and this uh, concrete block, and we're going to show you what Smart Send is all about. It's basically the same thing as Send, only it's a little bit smarter. Let's start off by showing you what that means with an HDRI. Typically, if you're going to bring in one of our HDRIs using Studio, you're going to have to come over here and grab a redshift light, a dome light. You're going to have to create the dome light, jump into the texture, navigate to where it is, or drag it from studio onto the texture slot and that's a lot of clicks. I'm just going to jump over to my favorites tab in studio and we're going to show you what sending an HDRI is now. Before we couldn't even send HDRIs, they were only available as copy path or drag the path onto your dome light. But now I can just click send and I can send an HDRI and it's going to automatically connect it up to a dome light for me along with an HDRI link tag. So from right there, I'm good. I might want to just come in here and maybe bring the intensity up and bring the saturation down. And there you go. That was like what? Like milliseconds. Well, maybe not milliseconds, but very fast. The other added benefit of this is as long as you have that HDRI link tag selected and you navigate in studio to your downloads or any HDRI that you have downloaded, you can click on it just like you would with HDRI link. So if I want to swap this to a different HDRI and I have my, uh, my HDRI link tag selected, I can just select that HDRI right here and it's going to swap it out for me live. So let's find maybe another one, maybe this one and maybe not that one. Maybe we want to go back to Creative Office. There we go. Super fast. Just keeping you in the flow. This whole studio update is all about keeping you in the flow. If I don't want to swap, maybe I just want to have multiple HDRIs, you can do that as well too. So if I just send another HDRI, it's just going to make another HDRI here and I can just turn off that first one and I can kind of like audition ones that I might want to use and try different workflows that way. Because sometimes I like to have multiples and just like turn them on and off and see which one I like. HDRIs, much easier to send now. What's next? Let's jump back into our favorites. If you haven't used the favorites tab, in studio it's great you can favorite any asset they show up right here all right so let's talk about area lights for doing area light maps using soft boxes and whatnot the typical workflow would be redshift you know grab an area light and then jump down to texture navigate to where your texture is and then move that light wherever you need it but i i have a very specific way i like to use area lights i have a very simple null rig that i use on every single project and we've added that same null rig to studio. So now if I send a, an area light map, a soft box, and I just hit send, it's gonna create a nice little area light controller rig right here. If I zoom out into my little perspective view, you can see it. So from right here, I'm able to completely rotate this light around. And also, you know, maybe I wanna tilt it this way, move it around that way. And maybe I wanna move the light a little closer to my subject. And this is just a simple null rig, but it comes pre-built in, so you don't have to like go through all these clicks and try to set this up. Let's bring that intensity down a little bit, somewhere like right in there. So you can see just how fast I was able to bring in a softbox and orient my light to my subject and make it look good. And it's just a null rig, it's just really simple. You can move it wherever you want. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier to start lighting, lighting up your objects. And the same goes for this one. As long as you have that HR link tag selected, I can swap to maybe this, uh, this umbrella instead and see what that looks like. Let's talk about gobos. So gobos are kind of a pain to set up because you have to come over to Redshift, grab a light, grab a spotlight, 
And these spotlights are always coming in like like super bright and like literally like pointed directly in Z, which is kind of a pain. If you want to add the gobo, you have to come down here and add it to the texture. And it's, it's again, just a lot of clicks to get it set up. Well, if you send a gobo with Smart Send just by hitting the send button on a gobo that we have downloaded here, it's going to come pre-built into a, uh, a spotlight for you. And it's also going to have a nice target tag. So now I have this nice little target that I can come in here and just orient the way I want. Again, we're just trying to save you clicks. The things that you're already going to do if you're setting up a gobo, we want to do that for you and get you moving faster. Same principles as the other lights. As long as that HDRI link tag is selected, I can swap out and try maybe this light coming through a window. Super, super useful stuff. All right, so lastly, we have the ability to do stuff with surface imperfections. So let's kill this light and let's bring back in the creative office light. And I'm just gonna jump into a close up camera on this and we're going to really just isolate this highlight because we're gonna bring in a surface imperfection to make this highlight a little bit smudgy. It's already kind of smudgy, it looks like. So let's get rid of the existing surface imperfection that we have in there and let's add a new one. So with that material selected, I've got the bottle selected. That's very important. This will only work if you uh, if you have your material selected. And let's find a surface imperfection that we like. I've got one set up right here. And if I send this, it's automatically going to send it and connect it up to a ramp for you so that you can control exactly how the surface imperfection is going to look for you. So it's got the texture with the surface imperfection already loaded into the ramp. Let's pipe that into our roughness and let's just grab that ramp and start to clamp it down a little bit to make it a little bit more contrasty. Let's make it kind of extreme just so you guys can see it. That's pretty extreme. And there you go. So that's super handy too. Again, this whole update is just geared on trying to make you work faster. And last but not least, we've updated a few things with models. So if you have a model, you can actually just drag it in and it'll come in as an FBX, same as like a typical FBX import. And you can just hit okay and it'll bring it into a scene. You can also now copy and paste uh, the path of a model too, which is great. Tons of stuff to play with. You're gonna wanna update Studio. You're gonna wanna update the connectors before you start playing with this stuff and just have fun. Let us know if it's saving you clicks what do you think? If you're not a Cinema 40 user, hit us in the comments and let us know which DCC we should look to support with these features next. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.